Welcome back. A bombshell new interview in the Hunter Biden scandal. We've been talking about this morning. Former business associate of Hunter Biden, Tony Bobulinski, sitting down with Fox's Tucker Carlson last night to talk about the foreign business dealings within the Biden family and the former vice president's denial of them. In that email, there's a statement where they go through the equity. Jim Biden's referenced as, you know, 10% doesn't say Biden, it says Jim. And then it has 10% for the big guy held by H. I 1,000% sit here and know that the big guy is referencing Joe Biden. Um, it's, that's crystal clear to me because I lived it. I met with the former vice president in person multiple times. Bob Alinsky also responding to claims by House Intel Committee Chairman Adam Schiff that the Hunter Biden story was some kind of Russian disinformation. To have a congressman out there speaking about Russian disinformation or Joe Biden at a, uh, at a public debate referencing Russian disinformation when he knows he sat face to face with me, that I was traveled around the world with his son and his brother, to say that and associate that with my name is absolutely disgusting to me. Joining me right now is the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton, and Judicial Watch has done an incredible job. Tom, you've done a great job in terms of getting these documents out into the public so that we could actually see what has taken place in the 2016 coup to take down Donald Trump, and now this. What was your reaction to the interview last night, Tom? Well, it's astonishing. You have uh, a very credible witness coming forward that highlights that the Biden family were running a, a RICO-type enterprise. Uh, to launder money from abroad for their personal benefit. And uh, the FBI has been sitting on this for months. Evidently, they've interviewed this, this witness, Mr. Bobulinski. You know, but your, your, your viewers should know now there are three streams of evidence. We've got the laptop. We have uh, Mr. Bobulinski, who was on TV yesterday and has been public otherwise. We have another set of emails from their other business partner that also verify this. So anyone who tells you there's no cooperation is lying to you. And I don't say this lightly about Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff is a liar when he talks about Russia disinformation. And any media outlet who pushes that forward uh, really is engaged in the worst type of uh, dishonesty and propaganda, all to help Joe Biden and all to, all to hurt President Trump. I mean, many major media organizations are making partisan decisions right now to suppress this not for any news value issue, not on, not on news issues, but on political issues. And the, and the companies, right. the big yep. tech companies, Section 230 has nothing to do with this. They're engaged in fraudulent business practices, deceiving the public, deceiving their shareholders when they say they are suppressing this material for reasons other than politics. Well, I mean, you have to look at them as activists, Tom. I was talking to Charlie Kirk yesterday, and Charlie made the point, can you imagine if a company said, well, we're only going to make, like, let's say you're an auto company, we're only going to make cars for Democrats. We're just not going to make cars for anybody who, you know, believes in anything that was bad about Hunter Biden. I mean, look at what they're doing. They're just, they're just catering to one portion of their audience. That they're activists. That's why this big tech and censorship hearing is so important today. CEOs from Google, Facebook, Twitter set to testify before the Senate Commerce Committee later this morning. They're going to face questions over Section 230 of the 1996 Communications Decency Act. I know you don't think this is what this is about, but this law essentially shields them from lawsuits over content posted to their platforms. The platforms have been criticized for censoring all sorts of stuff, including the Hunter Biden story. Tom, are they going to lose that liability, number one? And how do you get at the censorship part of this? Because the, the liability shield, look at what happened to Craigslist. When Craigslist started getting sued, it's a shell of itself. I mean, these companies, this is a serious situation if they uh, now have to deal with lawsuits. But I don't know. Does that cover what you're talking about, censorship of information? Because they're activists. Well, I think, I, I don't even think Section 230 needs to be changed. Without getting too technical, it doesn't protect against censorship for fraudulent purposes, partisan purposes like they're doing here. Justice Thomas all but said that in a... Um, in a statement or a filing he uh, authorized a few weeks ago. I mean, they're censoring now my tweets, factual tweets about the risks of mail-in ballots, voter fraud, and dirty voting rolls. Completely partisan. Yeah. And they plan to suppress information about the election, not in any neutral way, 
but in a way to benefit Joe Biden in the days before and the days afterwards in case the election's disputed. Uh, this, the business model they're pursuing now, I, I, I would predict, are, is going to be dead in six months, either from legal challenges that will be successful under the current Section 230 or uh, a reform to the bill uh, or, or an underlying reform to the law that make it clear, makes it clear uh, they can't abuse their, um, uh, the powers they have in the, in the tech sphere anymore. Tom, tell me about what Judicial Watch uncovered, the briefing memo showing Democratic lobbying firm uh, met with U.S. officials in Ukraine in fe February 2019 and talked about the Burisma holdings. Tell me what you just got uh, in terms of this uh, FOIA request. Yeah, magically they found this memo uh, almost a year after we asked for them. Ambassador Yovanovitch, who was the Obama holdover Ukraine ambassador, met with this firm, and she was briefed by the, on the fact that they were also there to talk to someone else in the embassy about Burisma. This firm also was asking her about visa issues. I guess there were some folks who weren't being allowed into the country. It's really incredible information. The person involved in this briefing is Sally Painter. She works for Blue Star Strategies. She goes all the way back to the Clinton era. Uh, so this is um, just yeah. more information showing that Burisma had an in because of uh, with Democratic operatives in the deep state uh, with witnesses who yep. were targeting Trump later. Well, it's, a, it's incredible to me, Tom. It certainly feels, you mentioned Adam Schiff, it feels like the group that abused power in 2016 wants to be in power again. It's as simple as that. <laughs> By the way, congrats to you. President Trump announcing he's appointing you to the D.C. Commission on Judicial Disabilities and Tenure, an oversight group that has the power to remove certain judges over misconduct. Uh, you must looking forward to that. Tell me, tell me about that appointment, Tom, real quick. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, the commission oversees the superior court judges here in D.C., the Court of Appeal judges, the, the D.C. equivalent of state and local judges. So uh, it's, a, it's a big deal here in D.C., so it's exciting, and I'm honored to get the appointment. Tom, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for all your great work on all of this. Thank you so much for joining us. Tom Fitton joining us this morning. We'll see you soon, Tom.